Hi everyone, welcome back to Wild Reads. My name is Dave, welcome back to another video. And welcome back, I can't believe we're doing the October TBR already. This year is absolutely flying along, but October it is nearly, this is going out on a Wednesday night, I think just a few days before the start of October. So I'm here to tell you about what I'm going to be reading in the month of October. Got some really, really exciting books lined up for October. I've got seven in a little pile here, but I have got eight penciled in, but one of them I haven't got yet. So the one I haven't got, I will tell you about, it's going to be Melmoth. I'm not sure when in the month I'm gonna to get to it, but I'm gonna be reading Melmoth by Sarah Perry. I haven't bought it yet. I'm going to buy it on bookshop day which is Saturday, the, uh, Saturday, October the 6th. I'm going to my local independent bookstore to buy it um, because Bookshop Day is all about supporting your local independent bookshops. And I'm sure you'll hear me wanging on about it on Twitter and on the gram if you follow me on those platforms. So that's the first book I've got penciled in for the month of October. The second book, and probably the first book in the month that I'll be reading, is this little beauty, this is The Corset by Laura Purcell. Can you see the beauty in this cover? Look at that, absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna be buddy reading this with my friend Vanessa, who's a brilliant um, book blogger, book blogger and classic movie blogger. Um, and I shall link Vanessa's uh, blog in the show notes down below. But we read back in July, I think it was, we read Laura Purcell's first book, which was called The Silent Companions, which was utterly fabulous. Really, really, we, we both really, really loved it. And we were, during the reading of that, we discovered that the corset was due to drop imminently. Um, and so it came out last Thursday. It is absolutely gorgeous. I've heard nothing but good things about it. Uh, so I'm really, really looking forward to it. I, and I haven't even hauled this because I only got this at the weekend. So this hasn't even appeared on any haul yet. But just to blurb it for you, it says here, and look at this, look at the end papers on this. Look at that, isn't that amazing? I love a peacock feather. Dorothea, Dorothea and Ruth, prison, visit, prison visitor and prisoner, powerful and powerless. Dorothea Trulove is young, wealthy and beautiful. Ruth Butterham is young, poor and awaiting trial for murder. When Dorothea's charitable work leads her to Oak Gate Prison, she is delighted to have the chance to explore her fascination with phrenology and test her hypothesis that the shape of a person's skull can cast light on their darkest crimes. But when she meets teenage seamstress Ruth, she is faced with another theory that it is possible to kill with a needle and thread. For, for Ruth attributes her crimes to a supernatural power inherent in her stitches. The story Ruth has to tell of her deadly creations of bitterness and betrayal, of death and dresses, will shake Dorothea's belief in rationality and the power of redemption. Can Ruth be trusted? Is she mad? Or is she a murderer? I absolutely cannot wait for that. So that is the first read of the month. Another book I am greatly looking forward to reading is Kate Atkinson's Transcription. I really want, I've got some real big titles this month. Think of it as an adventure. Perry has said right at the beginning of all this, and it seemed like one, a bit of a lark, she had thought, a girl's own adventure. 1940, 18 year old Julia Armstrong is reluctantly recruited into the world of espionage. Sent to an obscure department of MI5 tasked with monitoring the comings and goings of British fascist sympathisers. Transcription is a work of rare depth and texture. Really, really looking forward to that. I'm not, I've not read a great deal of Kate Atkinson. I have a great deal of Kate Atkinson on my shelves, but I, it's one of those authors that I just never get round to reading. So, really, really looking forward to getting my literary teeth stuck into transcription. Also, Kate Atkinson is one of those rare authors that, um, that so she's known as a, as a literary author, but her sales are that of a commercial author. So she's got that real crossover. Very interesting, very much looking forward to that. I th oh, 
I dropped that one there. I, I think I, <laughs> I think this next book, I think I put on the TBR for last month. I didn't get around to it, I swapped it, and I'll tell you why. This, this is The Holder by Jess Kidd. I won't read you the blurb on it, look it up if you need to, because I read the blurb on this the last time. But we've got about, I've got, I'm in the middle of Sally Rooney's first book, Conversations with Friends, at the moment, because I want to read Normal People next month, which I have here. Um, and I also, before the end of this week, going into the weekend, I want to read uh, Jess Kidd's first book, which was called Himself, which I've got lined up on the TVR shelves over there. I should be That's going to be my weekend read this week. Uh, so I wanted to read that before I read The Holder. Not that the two stories are linked, but it's just me being a bit OCD. I wanted to read the author's first book before I read their second. That's the only reason. I know it's strange. Please don't judge me. Um, and so the next one after that will be the hold. Uh, will be the holder. No, will be normal people by Sally Rooney. I am reading conversations with friends as I am filming this. Well, not actually, literally as I am filming this because I'm not I'm talking to you. But that is my current read, and I am really, really enjoying it. So, and I've heard this is even better. This is obviously on the on the booker list. Normal people. People know that Marianne lives. We in the white mansion with the driveway and that Connell's mother is a cleaner but no one knows of the special relationship between these facts. Connell and Marianne grew up in the same small town in the west of Ireland but the similarities end there. In school Connell is popular and well liked while Marianne is a loner who has learnt from painful experience to stay away from her classmates. When the two strike up a conversation in Marianne's kitchen, awkward but electrifying, something life-changing begins. Normal People is a story of mutual fascination, friendship and love. It takes us from that, converse, from that conversation to the years beyond, in the company of two people, funny, magnetic, complex, who try to stay apart but find they can't. Normal people, Sally Rooney. Can't wait to get into that one. Another one I've got lined up for October is A Ladder to the Sky by John Boyne. Again, heard lots and lots of good things about it. I think I've hauled this one, I'm sure I've hauled this one before. It says here, if you look hard enough, you can find stories pretty much anywhere. They don't even be ha have to be your own. Or so would be writer Maurice Swift decides very early on in his career. A chance encounter in a Berlin hotel with celebrated novel novelist Eric Ackerman gives him an opportunity to ingratiate himself with someone more powerful than him. For Eric is lonely and he has a story to tell, whether or not he should is another matter. Once Morris has made his name, he sets off in pursuit of other, other people's stories. He doesn't care where he finds them or to whom they belong as long as they help him rise to the top. Stories will make him famous, but they will also make him beg, borrow and steal. They may even make him do worse. A dark and twisted psychological drama, A Ladder to the Sky shows how easy it is to achieve in the world if you are prepared to sacrifice your soul. That's my kind of blurb. That sounds absolutely brilliant and I am very much looking forward to reading that. That's A Ladder to the Sky by John Boyne. A thriller for the month. A thriller, I usually like to include a thriller. A thriller this month is going to be this. This is Cross Her Hearts from Sarah Pinbra. I can't remember if I've read Sarah Pinbra's first book. I'm not sure. What was the name of her first book? Behind Her Eyes. I don't think I have, but I have got it. It's somewhere. It's somewhere in this room. I'm not sure where, but it is somewhere. Um, so this one looks really, really good as well. Someone is living a lie, but who? Is it Lisa? Haunted by a tragic past, all Lisa wants is a quiet life with her daughter, Ava. And when she meets a new man, things seem to be falling into place. But Lisa is hiding a secret so momentous it can shatter her entire world. Is it Ava? When 16-year-old Ava saves a young boy's life, she becomes a local hero, but never in a million years could she have anticipated the fallout of her actions. Marilyn has the perfect life, her husband, her job, her house. She seems to have it all. But she can never admit to her best friend Lisa the lies she tells herself to get through the day. 
One moment will change these three women's lives forever and the secrets they've all been keeping could destroy them all. Brilliant, I do love, I do love a thriller, really do. Uh, and that, that one, look at that cover. That is incredible, isn't it? Cross Her Heart, Sarah Pimbra. Um, and another one on the list that I haven't got to this year and I'm, I'm not ashamed to say because I'm not ashamed of anything I haven't read, um, but I've had it a while and I've been meaning to get to it. And it's one of those books that I've seen on the immediate TBR shelf over there. And I, some of them can wait till next year. Um, some of them cannot. And this was one that cannot. Uh, this is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. Again, heard lots and lots of good things about this and I just haven't got to it yet. And, and, and I really wish, I really wish I had, but I do plan to read it this month. Again, another gorgeous, gorgeous waxy cover. Uh, in Shaker Heights, a placid progressive suburb of Cleveland, everything is meticulously planned from the layout of the winding roads to the colors of the houses, to the successful lives its residents will go on to lead. And no one embodies this spirit more than Elena Richardson, whose guiding principle is playing by the rules. Brilliant, can't wait to read that. Um, I've Again, I've heard so, so many good things about this book. Um, one of these books, um, I was thinking about um, my end of year video and what will, I don't think I've read my book of the year yet. I've, I, I really don't think I've read it yet, but I think it could be one of these. I think it contained within that TBR, and don't forget, I haven't bought Melmoth yet. I think, I've just got a feeling that one of these books is going to be my book of the year. I don't know, I could be wrong. But I've read some good books this year. It's been a really good, apart from a couple of months that have been a bit iffy, it's been a really good reading year. And I've read some absolutely fantastic books this year. I'm really looking forward to making those, uh, those end of year videos in December. I'm not wishing the year away. It's going quick enough as it is. But um, it will be interesting to see what my book of the year is this year. Anyway, I've rambled on enough. Um, I'll let you get back to your lives. Thank you for watching. I will be back on, um, on when will I be back? I might be back later in the week. In fact, I probably will be because I've got to announce the winner of the giveaway, the competition. Um, so I've got to do that. If you haven't entered, you still have got probably a couple more hours to enter. Whatever you're doing this week or until I see you again. Enjoy your books. And I'll see you back here very soon for another BookTube video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.